Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm at home today with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so very much for joining me today as we continue the theme we began on Monday. And that is Jesus is a champion and Jesus wants us to be champions also because when we were, when we were born again, we were born to win. Amen. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Notice what it says. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. Amen. And Jesus is calling for all of us to be champions, to be successful. Amen. Uh, and when we are successful and we achieve God's purposes for our lives, that's what brings glory to God. It brings glory to God. It gives us the platform in which to share our testimonies. Now, in order to be the champion God is calling, calling for you to be in your life, we talked about conceptualization, uh, moving beyond what is present to dreaming of what is possible. We talked about concentration, the importance of staying focused. And now there's another C word, conceptualization, concentration, and continuation, continuation. In other words, the ability to stick with something until you reach the goal, just like a stamp sticks with the letter until it reaches the destination, stays connected to the stamp until it reaches your mailbox. And God wants us to stick to what God has called us to do until we reach the destination. Amen. That's called continuation. And I believe that those three things are what makes champions champions. Conceptualization, concentration, continuation. Listen, we're told that Jesus is the hero. But look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 again. Look at what it says. Who We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. That tells us who Jesus is. It says he initiates or starts our faith. The word perf perfects means to complete the faith. So Jesus initiates something and then Jesus completes something. He's the author and finisher of our faith. That is who Jesus is. Who is he? He's the author and finisher of our faith. But it also tells us in verse two, what Jesus did, how he was able to finish. Verse two says this, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion of our faith, who initiates and perfects. The word perfect means to end it or complete something because of the joy awaiting him. This is what Jesus did, he endured. He endured. He just kept on. He just, you know, the old folks used to say, keep on keeping on. And he kept on keeping on. He endured. And God wants us to be able to endure and gives us the strength and the power to endure. Who Jesus was, author and finisher of our faith, or the perfecter of our faith, uh, what Jesus did, Jesus endured. And, and there's some things you got to endure. Don't give up till you go up. But it also tells us why Jesus did it. Why did he do all that? The difficulties, the cross, the shame. Look at verse two again. It tells us why Jesus did it. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy that awaited him. In other words, Jesus knew that he endured something that at the end of the endurance of the cross, Notice what is going to happen. Look at that last sentence. Now he is seated in the place of honor. You know, we love to see people in their glory, but we don't know their story. We don't know what they had to go through to get into the seat of honor. Amen. We don't know what they had to endure, but we see here that Jesus endured something because he knew that he was going to move to victory. And whatever you are going through right now, endure it. Stick with it. It's not what you're going through, amen, but it's what you're going to. Now, now this verse also tells us where Jesus is now. It Where Jesus is now. Look at verse 2 again. Verse two says this, 
Amen. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaited, awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. In other words, he didn't pay attention to the shame of being on the cross. And some people you just can't pay attention to. You disregard them. Now he's in the place of honor, but look what he had to endure to get there. And champions are willing to endure in order to get to the place, amen, of honor. So this second verse tells us four things. Who Jesus is, who Jesus is. He is uh, the one who perfects our faith. He initiates and perfects our faith, who Jesus is. It also tells us what Jesus did. Jesus endured. It tells us why Jesus did it, because he knew that he was going to have joy once he went through what he was going through, and he's going to have joy because of the victory of being the champion. And it tells us where Jesus is now. He's in the place of honor, but he just didn't get there easily. He had to endure some things, and you won't get to become the champion in whatever area of life you have. Uh, are endeavoring, you're conceptualizing in your life, you won't get there unless you're willing to endure. Now, here's what I want to close with. You saw what G, who Jesus is. You saw what Jesus did. He endured. You saw why Jesus did it because he knew that if he just kept kept on keeping on, that he was going to experience victory. We see where Jesus is now. He's at the right hand of the Father. What keeps us going? How do you keep on going? Well, here's what keeps you going. One, know that heaven is cheering for us. God is cheering for us. You know, um, there's some people in my life that if they're proud of me, I don't care what anybody else thinks. When my father was alive and my father said, Kevin, I'm proud of you. Boy, you're doing it. It didn't matter if the whole world was against me. The fact that my father was cheering me helped me keep, helped me to keep going and notice your heavenly father and the angels and those who preceded you are cheering you. They're cheering you. Look at what verse one says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses, remember I started off talking on Monday about how sports, the sports crave that the first century was and how they built Circus Maximus, that a stadium that seated 180,000 people. What this is saying is that in heaven, those who were champions are in heaven cheering us on. That's what it's saying. So, for example, as a person who's trying to, to, to achieve justice for, for, for Black Americans and build institutions that help empower Black Americans, like an HBCU, what cheers me on is when I get discouraged, I know that Benjamin Mays is up there saying, Kevin, keep on keeping on. I know Frederick Douglass and Soldier and the Truth. And Harriet Tubman are up there saying, Kevin, keep on keeping on. I know that uh, that, that Matt King Carter and, and Gardner Taylor and some of the, the, uh, uh, the great leaders of the past are saying, keep on keeping on. More importantly, I know God is cheering me on. And what keeps you going is knowing that people who you respect in the past from, from Malcolm X to Fannie Lou Hamer to Rosa Parks are all cheering us on. Heaven is cheering us on. Number two, what should keep us going is this. People before you have gone through worse things than you will ever go through. And they won. Whenever I think I've got to endure something, I think about what my four parents had to endure. And if God gave them the strength to endure slavery and Jim Crow and lynching and the separation of our families on auction blocks and, and all the horrors of segregation and humiliation and degradation that our people had to endure, yeah, we have we have come over a world a, a way that with tears have been watered, treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out of a gloomy past till now we stand at last where the bright gleam of our bright star has been cast. Look, that's we've come through some stuff. And so if our foreparents have come through it, certainly we can get through it also. And that's what keeps us going. And then thirdly, it's not what you're going through, but it's what you're going to. Amen. So Galatians 6 and 9 says, listen to this. So let, uh, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give 
up. It's not what you're going through, it's what you're going to. And these are the things that keep us going. Heaven is cheering us. People before you have gone through worse circumstances than you and won. It's not what you're going through, it's what you're going to. Somebody needs to take a picture of this, put it in a conspicuous place, and for the next two weeks, just keep repeating this to yourself. So just remember, what will keep you going is telling yourself, you gotta keep repeating it to yourself. Heaven is cheering for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Two, people before you've gone through worse circumstances than you and have won. They won. Three, it's not what you're going through, it's what you are going to. Don't get tired of doing what's right. You will reap if you faint not. Amen. So don't forget conceptualization, concentration, continuation, continuation. Stick with it. Don't give up. And never forget this important point. And that is, this is a point to ponder. Nothing worthwhile ever happens without energy and endurance. Nothing. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. If it were easy, you would not have to have faith to trust God. Just hang in there. Don't give up. Conceptualization. Dream a big dream. The dream God has given for you. Concentration. Cut out all the unnecessary. Focus on your dream. Quit wasting time. Continuation. Stick with it. Don't give up. God has a great plan for your life. God wants you to be a champion. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today. Help us to truly believe that a bright future is in front of us, that when we're born again, we were born to win. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me Another for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Look, you have a blessed day the rest of the day. You champion you. And until we gather on tomorrow, don't forget that during this pandemic called COVID-19, please stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still on the throne. He's in control. God bless you. See you tomorrow.